Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man shows blindness in a new perspective in order to capture the essence of reality and to relate back to the world to prove how blind we all really are. For a swift instant between the gesture and the opaque glitter of his glasses, I saw the blinking of sightless eyes. Homer A. Barbie was blind. Ralph Ellison reflects back to the mythological story of the Odyssey by Homer and relates Chapter 5's Homer A. Barbie to that of the Odyssey, which is the idea of the Cyclops or blindness. Ellison conveys Homer A. Barbie to be just that, and named him after Homer, the creator of the Odyssey. So that is the meaning of discipline, I thought. Sacrifice, yes. and blindness, he does not see me. The narrator wonders if true sacrifice and discipline is really worth becoming blind, both literally and theoretically. And there, on the bottom of the glass, lay an eye. A glass eye. A buttermilk white eye distorted by the light rays, and eyes staring fixedly at me as from the dark waters of a well. The narrator now picks up the pieces as to why Brother Jack is unable to see the world outside his brotherhood. It is because he is half blind, and having the glass eye act as a mask in order to thoroughly see. They think we're blind, uncommonly blind. Think about it. They've dispossessed us each of one eye from the day we were born. Ellison tells how the white men during that time treated and acted towards black beings, and through this quote it is apparent that the white men deliberately fooled the black men into thinking the way things were was okay, but then the blacks can see again and realize everything is not okay anymore. They deserve respect and dignity just like everyone else, only in the end realizing how they blinded themselves to life's reality. I looked at his eye so he knows how I feel, which eye is really the blind one. Throughout the novel, the narrator grows closer to the reality of the entire world wearing a mask, narrowing down and asking which eye is the blind one. Brother Jack makes it very difficult for the narrator to see which eye can truly see, which relates back to how the world is so completely blind to what it has to offer. I was my experiences and my experiences were me, and no blind men, no matter how powerful they became, could take that. The narrator learns that throughout all the obstacles he's ever been through, and all the blind men he's come across, they cannot take his respect, his dignity, and most importantly, his discipline to handle the world. They were blind, fat blind, moving only by the echoed sounds of their own voices, and because they were blind, they would destroy themselves, and I'd help them. The narrator agrees to help the white men destroy themselves in the fact that, for the longest time, the white men destroyed him while he'd been blind, however now he can see what they did to him and now they are blind and heading in the wrong direction, and the invisible man will be there leading their way to destruction. I'd overcome them with yeses, undermine them with grins, I'd agree them to death and destruction. Oh, I'd serve them well, and I'd make invisibility felt if not seen, and they'd learn that it could be as polluting as a decaying body. The narrator, like the white men, would put on his mask and lead them to where they led him. I was invisible, and hanging would not bring me to visibility, even to their eyes, since they wanted my death not for myself, but for the chase I'd been on all my life, because of the way I'd run, been run, chased, operated, purged, although to a great extent I could have done nothing else given their blindness and my invisibility. Ralph Ellison portrays the invisible man as a man that thought that the sheer coat of blindness over his eyes was lifted, but then through the remaining of the novel realizes that the light might not always be at the end of the tunnel, and perhaps everyone will always be blind to life and all its realities.